Thanks for staying with us here on the marketplace. We begin from the U.S. where the central bank in that country has increased interest to be paid on government bonds sold by a quarter of a percent. This was after it met to review the health of the U.S. economy last week. The development could impact on the country's debt stock and interest paid on fresh bonds to be sold by Ghana. There's more in the following Business Desk report. According to the U.S. Federal Reserve, the increase was due to pick up in growth prospects for the U.S. economy. Here is Chair of the Federal Reserve, Janet Yearling. You may have noticed that we altered the statement language about the labor market outlook. This change highlights that the committee expects the labor market to remain strong with sustained job creation, ample opportunities for workers, and rising wages. This hike would mean that persons who are investing or intend to buy U.S. government papers, which is seen as the safest in the world, will be getting more in terms of returns. Therefore, Ghana may have to pay these investors a little bit more in terms of interest to attract them to buy bonds issued by the government of Ghana. It is believed that this could impact negatively on the public debt, which has reached 139 billion cities ending September this year, as well as a total interest payment for next year, which government has projected will be almost 15 billion cities. The rate hike by the U.S. Federal Reserve is coming at a time when ratings agency Moody's has warned that Ghana would be paying high interest on the planned Eurobond sale for next year because of some development in the U.S. Now, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has disclosed that disbursement of the $1 million for each constituency will begin next year. According to Dr. Bamiya, the promise by government to improve infrastructure in rural communities will be supported with the fund. He made the remark in a keynote address at the launch of the Ghana Economic Club in Accra. Here's Ebenezer Sabote's report. The government, upon assumption of office, promised to allocate these funds to support the development of local assemblies by providing basic infrastructure at that level. The vice president says government has made allocation for the funds and disbursement will begin for the various assemblies. According to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, this is part of measures to bridge the infrastructure gap between urban and rural communities. The fact that at the, in the many of the rural and deprived communities, uh, there's a, a real problem um, of basic infrastructure, water, toilets, uh, sanitation, so basic infrastructure is not available. And this is why we have decided to say, well, let us take 20% of the capital budget and make it available for each district. And that is what uh, we are doing, each constituency. So this is 20% of the capital budget, and we are sharing it amongst an average of about a million dollars a constituency each year. 2018 will be the first real full year of the implementation of this program. And we hope that in so doing, at the rural level, the problems of water, the problems of toilets, and so on, the basic infrastructure that are, are needed can be solved. The vice president was speaking at the launch of the Economic Club of Ghana. The club is made up of some economists and members of academia with the objective of creating the platform for discussions on developing the economy. Board Chairman of the Economic Club of Ghana, Professor Edward Ayinsu, explains how the club would be of help to government in developing the economy. You heard my initial uh, remarks. See, you people couch everything in political terms. I don't have time for parties. And I said, the only party I belong to is Ghana. The rest I don't know where they came from. The time has come for us to put partisan things on the side. If you look at the manifestos, they are all the same. So what are we talking about? What we need is to put the best brains at our command to help change the complexion of this country. Yeah, and I know we can do Members of the club include former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Enes Aite, and Professor Newman Kusi of the Institute of Fiscal Studies. 
Acting Corporate Services Executive of MTN Ghana, Georgina Sarif Yagben, who says the company has embarked on vigorous educational campaign to school its merchants on how to reduce the incidence of mobile money fraud. She said the situation was worrying as several people are being duped by fraudsters. Georgina Fiagbenu made the statement at a forum organized by MTN to interact with its key stakeholders. Joining us is our West Regional Correspondent, uh, Rafiq Salam, reports. The purpose of the program is to share an overview of MTN's business performance in the previous year, what their focus for 2017 has been, MTN contribution to the telecommunication industry and the growth of the country's economy. It is also to promote MTN's vision of leading the delivery of a bold new digital world to its customers and making customers' life a whole lot brighter. The forum was attended by key stakeholders, including heads of banking institutions, police and other service commanders, and media practitioners in the Upper West region. Corporate Communication Manager of MTN, Georgina Asarif Yegbenu, noted that mobile money for cases has been on the rise who they have embarked on vigorous education to nip the practice in the bud. We've spoken to customers and we are also using the media to talk to customers. And one of the things we are saying is that under no circumstances should anybody give out their PIN code. Just as you will not, you know, give your ATM card number to anybody, you shouldn't do that also with your mobile money PIN. So once that is addressed, we know that a huge percentage of the scam, you know, would, would, would be controlled. What we are also saying is that if you haven't initiated any transaction, make sure you don't participate in it. So if anybody calls you to say, this is what we've seen, this is what we've observed, you did a transaction here, we want you to take this action, don't do it. You have to initiate that transaction. She has sold customers of MTN to try and take advantage of the new programs they intend to roll out next year. So we are looking at a 2018 where we provide more access and opportunities for people to stay connected. MTN is roll, roll, rolling out new um, technology to ensure that we are able to address the gaps in rural areas. We started this year, 2018 will continue so that more rural areas will be connected to the network. We are increasing our 4G, 3G, 2G sites, and it's something that we'll continue to do in 2018. Georgina also threw more light on MTN Heroes of Change program. We see the media doing a lot of interventions in their communities. The media are promoters of change in their communities. And so we want to give special recognition to one media person who we think has done a lot of change or promoted positive change in their community. And we are also going to give recognition to one celebrity because we also see some of the celebrities doing a lot of CSR interventions. So the regular areas will still be there and in addition we'll give special recognitions to two new people. One municipal commander of the Ghana Police Service, ASP Vincent Napier, urged MTN to take the education of their merchants seriously in order to reduce fraud in the mobile money business. If you go to the bank and you want to deposit money, not until the bank has received the money from you, check it and see that it is correct. They will never enter in your account. So what I want the MTN to do is to educate their merchants that when they are there and somebody comes to transfer money, they have to get hold of the money before they do the transaction. How do you do the, the transaction without first getting access to the money? That is the challenge that we are having. Reporting for Joy Business, Rafik Salam. Wow. Aviation Now and co-chairman of Africa World Airlines, Togbia Fede, has reiterated the need for African countries to open up their airspaces to promote air transport on the continent. He said African economies start to gain more through regional integration. Togbia Fede made the call at the launch of Africa World Airlines' maiden Accra Monrovia-bound flight which took place in Monrovia, Liberia. Made in Accra Monrovia flight by indigenous carrier, Africa World Airlines touched down at about 150 GMT at the Roberts International Airport in Liberia's capital, Monrovia. The extension of the airline is part of the long-term aim of connecting the sub-region in the shortest possible time. 
According to co-chairman of the airline, Togi Afede, extending services to Liberia is to promote economic development through regional integration. Integration is very important because that would mean that we can benefit from our potential as a continent, a continent with one billion people, which we're thinking about a one billion people market and not a 4.5 million Liberian or 25 million, 28 million Ghanaian market. So I emphasize that integration is part of the inspiration for the creation of Africa World Airlines. We believe that is important for development. But we also believe that important for development is the need to open up our continent, which means transportation. So we are currently here at Roberts International Airport in Monrovia, Liberia. Now, this is where the maiden Accra Monrovia route by Africa World Airline just touched down. The Embraer 145, after spending about two hours in air, touched down here at Roberts International Airport. Now, this route, in addition to Africa World's air regional routes, besides the Lagos and Abuja one, is part of plans by the particular airline to enhance continental travel and trade relations within the sub-region. Liberia's finance minister, Bioma Kamara, also expressed his government's commitment to providing the enabling environment for investments to thrive for the benefit of both economies. The government is going to create an even environment that allows for your investment in Liberia to prosper. And we believe that it must be one that is mutually beneficial to the two peoples. And we think that whatever that is taking place, we see this within the aviation landscape is an opportunity that brings job. And this is what we are talking about. The development of Africa rests with Africans. The development of West Africa rests with West Africa. So Africa World Airlines entry into the market, we believe service delivery can be expected in terms of increased competition. And we're also seeing also price effect may obtain. So we don't take this lightly. In my capacity as the Minister of Finance and Development Planning, this is what we are looking for. For travelers, the introduction of this new route was good news. The first thing is the cost. The cost is not so much, and people can afford to travel on this plane. So business women and businessmen traveling from Ghana to Liberia, from Liberia to Ghana, I think they will really appreciate this gesture. It is really a nice thing. Africa World Airlines now flies three times from Accra to Monrovia on Tuesdays, Fridays and Sundays. And that was uh, Sheila Tamako's report from uh, Monrovia, Liberia. Let's talk about Christna, uh, Christmas now. And parents within the next two weeks will be busy doing the last minute shopping to get some presents for their children. Toy guns, water pistols, uh, dolls and race cars, you name it, are expected to be high on the shopping list. But have you heard about the Christmas egg? Well, Love Affairs' uh, Chrissy Deborah takes us to the market to experience the new craze in town. Rubber Duck, you're the one. Rubber Duck is a symbol of happiness and childhood memories. It gives comfort to people across age, nationality, and race. The baby duck sound has since time immemorial been incorporated into many toys. Now, it has found its way again into the market space, this time round, in an egg. According to a casual observer, these are two natural eggs. The one on my left wouldn't like it if I squeeze it that hard. But the one on my right wouldn't mind, because this is Christmas Egg! <laughs> it's everywhere on the market. 
one Ghana city per egg, a shopper takes home. As traders are making considerable sales. In a day, you can sell one or two packets. On a shopping spree, Pukwia was hooked when she first spotted the Christmas egg. She decided to try it on her six-month-old daughter. Angela would only stop crying if only she hears the sound of the Christmas egg. She's happy when I play it. She would stop crying immediately. It's not only soothing to the ears of children. Another parent, Kwesi Puku, has bought two, one for keeps and the other for his children at home. You'd think it's egg, but it's not. It's all fun. When you send the pack to the house, the children will love it. I'm happy when I hear the sound. Let me remind the parents who will be going to the market to buy the biscuits, the toffees for their kids. Don't forget to buy the Christmas egg because they think it's tastier and more delicious. Reporting for Joy News. Kwesi Debra, isn't he having a lot of fun there? Great report from him. Well, let's move on now. And product packaging is an important tool in attracting consumers. Most manufacturers place premium on uh, when introducing new product lines. Now, indigenous carton manufacturing firm, Fawn Packaging Ventures, since 2014, has been providing packaging solutions for manufacturers both home and abroad. Today on the Joy Business Van, uh, we visit the ultra-modern factory in Accra. One, two, three, close to 14 million cartons produced since its establishment in 2014, Fawn Packaging Ventures certainly means business. business was established by Frederick Osain team and is managed by his son Emmanuel Osain team. We come to the ultra modern factory at Spintex in Accra to get some more insight into the operations of the company which sits across a 2.5 acre land space. Globally the packaging market is estimated to total 442 billion dollars with an annual growth rate of some 3.5 percent. Out of this figure, packaging made of paper, cardboard and paperboard account for the lion's share at 46%. When we started, everything was quite subtle. You only had a few economies blooming, you had some not doing so well, some doing well. But things have changed over time, as Emmanuel explains to us. There's a boom in the economy, especially in the manufacturing sector. A boom in the economy also means a boom in e-commerce. More people are shopping online, and as incomes rise, more people are also visiting the malls, and that means an increase in demand for cartons. There's a huge market out there. Uh, Amazon is forecasted to use 7 million boxes a day this December alone for their production. So that is a phenomenon we're experiencing in Ghana now with companies like Jumia, etc. coming up as well. Fawn Packaging Ventures has worked for 129 clients since it started operations in 2014 for both local and multinational firms. Fawn Packaging's new factory would produce 3 million cartons to meet demands of the growing market. However, as Emmanuel points out, they have to grapple with inadequate supply of raw materials locally. We have sort of, I wouldn't say failed ourselves, but we have not grown fast enough to establish our own paper mills here to supply our own industries. Because for the next 50 years, Africa is still going to be using paper more than any other economy in the world. So that is what we have to put in place or what we envision needs to be done to ensure that 
at least in some continuity for industries such as ours. But thanks to our connections with our long history in the paper industry, we're still able to get our paper stock to be able to produce and deliver to our customers on time. And customers have become very particular about the quality of packaging. It's become a very important feature in product manufacturing. As we've hit on a number of times, the middle income class in Ghana is growing rapidly. So now you have more and more people shopping in the supermarkets and shopping malls as opposed to the open air markets in the past. And this increase in, in, in shoppers from the supermarkets means that there will be more demand for consumer goods. And the only way or the only medium by which these consumer goods get to these shop shelves is through cartons. So definitely there's a huge reliance on packaging and in order for the Ghanaian manufacturer to set their product apart from anyone else's, they need to focus on the quality. And that's what we are offering here. Very, very good, strong quality carton. It's impressive to see a Ghanaian paper packaging company making remarkable strides, especially in just three years of operations. For Emmanuel, this is also fulfilling his dreams of becoming an entrepreneur. It has not been an easy task though, having started with no clients and sometimes pushed away because he was young. But that is not stopping Emmanuel from taking the family business to the next level. We want to be known as one pioneering, pioneering uh, Ghanaian group that is making waves in the paper industry. Not necessarily just paper, in the future we may branch out to something else, but we want to be known as a major Ghanaian manufacturing institution or company across the continent. At the moment, Fond Packaging Ventures is not too far from that. Well, we are wrapping up in a minute. Before we go, just a quick uh, important news item we want to update you on. The Trade Union Congress, TUC, has given its full backing to the decision by some workers of Goldfields Ghana Limited to sue the company over an imminent massive layoff proposed by management. The decision to go to the court has been triggered by a change in the business model of the Takwa concession of Goldfields from owner mining to contractor mining, just like what pertains in Daman concession. We have more on that and other stories on Business Live. That is at 5 o'clock. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kwao.